Hi guys and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. As you can see a pretty big package came to us just recently, combining a few smaller boxes and another pretty big one. Judging by the writing on some of those boxes and especially on the big box, you've probably guessed what this video will be all about. And yes, you're right, it's about 3D printing. On that note, say hello to the Wisetex IdeaWork Plus 3D printer model. This is actually my first time encountering a 3D printer in person, although I know a pretty good deal about them, mostly through the Barnclays YouTube channel. So besides watching that, this will be a completely new experience for me and you're invited to come along if you want to. The product box in which printer comes is rather usual cardboard looking box, nothing special about it, just a product name, picture of the 3D printer and some information about the company. Of course we're not here because of the box, we are here because of its insides. Opening the box up, right away you'll encounter the accessories which are coming with it, like the 1 kilo roll of white PLA filament material for printing, heating plate, a list of all components inside of the box, power supply, an accessory bag in which besides the USB cable you will get a bunch of additional and very useful accessories like gloves for handling, routing tube and band hanger for material, some additional screws, clamps for the heated plate, different types of small knives for cutting off the excess material, squeegee for pulling off the objects from the heat plate, scissors for precise cuts, tweezers and 4GB USB stick. All in all hats off and a big thumbs up to Wisetech for a pretty hefty bundle. Moving back to the product box, the only thing left to do after removing the top protective foam is to completely pull out the printer outside of the box and release it of its plastic and foam saviors. As you can notice, IdeaWork Plus model comes in completely pre-assembled, which is a big plus as not all 3D printers are like that. This one in particular is really compact, sturdy and heavy, which is an added bonus since it moves a lot and copes with different forces when printing, and another reason why it has nice thick rubber feet on the bottom. A removing part chain and motor is covered and protected in this white metal housing, which also in the end gives it a decent look. On account of its smaller size, the IdeaWork Plus is mostly oriented on moving the printing bed more while printing, rather than moving the head with the filament extruder. The printing bed is in charge for Z and X axis and moving along of it, so be careful not to pinch your hands, while the head with the filament extruder is in charge for the Y axis. The bed itself measures a build volume of 150mm in width, 150mm in length and 140mm in height, which is decent enough for some smaller size projects as you'll see later on. The bottom front part of the printer houses an LCD touchscreen for controlling its basic functions, while on the opposite side of it, on the back end of the printer, you'll find a power on switch, power plug and USB Type-B port for the connection with the PC. On the left side of the printer you'll find another one, together with a LED power on indicator, and this Type-A port is used for printing directly from a USB stick. For the filament material we actually had a chance to try a few of them, but basically all were 1 kg PLA based filament in different colors, while we also had a 1 roll of wood filament. They are all neatly vacuumed and packed in the small boxes and you can of course buy them separately if you wish to have some other colors in your portfolio or if you just simply ran out of filament. Assembling the printer was pretty easy and straightforward, the only thing that we resent is lack of a paper user manual in the bundle, you'll have to go to their website and download the PDF file or pull it off from the USB stick which came with the printer. After putting everything together you are ready to go as is and print right away as IdeaWork Plus comes in pre-calibrated out of the factory. 
You can load the model either through USB stick or using the direct PC connection and their DoraWare software. Either way you'll choose it, you'll still have to use that software for every print since you have to convert the common STL model format to their readable WVTK format for printing. The software itself is pretty basic with some what seems to be usual functions like scaling, positioning, fill density, layer height, extruder temperature and so on. Once you import an STL file and set up your desired settings, you can then generate G code based on that and export it to a WVTK VTK file to your USB stick, or you can directly send that file from the software to the printer and start printing using that wired USB connection. We found ourselves printing of an USB stick for the most part, as with it you'll get a detailed view of progression in percentage, while in software you won't. You're probably wondering why I just didn't look at the printer display when printing from a computer, but the problem is that it locks down and shows no information whatsoever when it's printing this way. There is definitely some room for improvements in this field, starting from software which could have more information like time elapsed and time remaining when printing, a bit more settings to choose from and checked out spelling. In the end that wasn't that big of a deal of course, since everything turned out to work just fine and that's the most important part. The LCD screen on the printer has all the necessary functions through three different apps, main one having the load screen for the project via the USB stick, and up there you can also monitor the progress, temperatures and start or stop the printer. Other tabs offer some calibration settings and manual control over extruder and bed axis. Finally we moved to the final and most important part and that's printing the objects of course. For test run we did a simple cube which was already preloaded on the USB stick that came with the printer. Everything went really smoothly and we were very pleased with our first try ever to print something out. Being a simple object there wasn't any polishing off to do except pulling down the raft base. Moving on to the more complicated objects, which we mostly downloaded from my mini factory webpage, we experienced some of the usual mishaps. The most common one was when extruder carried around some leftover residue on the building surface itself, when it changed direction in a very fast manner, which tend to interfere with printing process later on. This was a very frequent scenario with wood filament, which is kinda specific in its own way. With PLA that wasn't the case at all, but it also had its own issues. For example, sometimes in the beginning of the printing, the raft line was okay occasionally pulled upwards by the extruder while moving across to another point. This is one of the reasons why we mostly use slow setting for printing speed. The most annoying problem was flexing of the objects using wood filament when printing, mostly on the bottom raft construction part of it. This was partially avoided by raising the bed temperature to its maximum of 100 degrees Celsius, usually it's around 60 degrees Celsius for PLA plastic, but in the end that also didn't help with larger surface objects, so we mostly used the PLA filament. This wasn't a printer's problem, but rather a filament specific material attributes of wood, which made it not to like big printing surfaces and rafts as they would flex. We did manage to print something in wood and that was our stand for tablets and a small badge with our Tactic logo on it, which we designed using the free Blender software. Although it can be a learning process, we were very happy with the printing results when using the regular PLA plastic type of filament. The printer itself is decently accurate with 0.2 and 0.3 mm layer precision and although we sometimes didn't use full raft support for some hanging parts when printing more complicated objects, cause it would just take too long to print it out, it managed to print those kind of objects without a problem like this bracer. Of course, also depending on the complexity of the printing objects, the time of printing can and will vary, while the noise that it makes while printing is declared up to 44 decibels, which seems to be an average figure. Once you're done with printing, some objects that are more complicated than a simple cube need to get some mending and polishing as they can have some imperfections. With the given tools you will be able to easily polish out some imperfections and your main ones will definitely be the woodcut knives and some sandpaper or in my case nail file. All in all, for the 3D printer newcomers, this will definitely be a trial and error experience just like mine was, there is no doubt about it, even if you already had some experience with them, in the end every printer turns out to be different. The most surprising fact was that this wasn't a frustrating experience, but rather a fun and interesting journey which you figure out along the way. Of course, it has its flaws as any other entry level budget 3D printer, but in the end of it all, IdeaWork Plus is a great starting point if you don't plan or don't want to build a printer on your own from a scratch.
Thank you once again guys for checking out our unboxing and review of the Wisetex IdeaWork Plus 3D printer. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to our TechTik YouTube channel or you can check out our other videos from before.